we hear all the time from nutritionists, from dietitians, from even doctors, from mainstream media, from your friends, from your coworkers, from articles we see on Facebook. All you need to do to lose weight is eat less calories and exercise more, right? Does that really work? Is that the real solution, right? I'm going to dig deep into that. I mean, what is the real cause of weight gain? Why are there people who are overweight? Were we designed to be overweight? Were we designed to have all this belly fat? I don't think so. I don't think we were designed to be overweight, right? Our creator, God, the universe, mother nature, love, whatever you believe in, our creator didn't create us to be overweight and unhealthy. Our creator created us to thrive, to make an impact, to live through us, right? But why are there so many people who are overweight? I used to be one of them. I used to be obese. And obesity is linked to so many diseases. You know, obesity is linked to high blood pressure, diabetes, cancer, depression, a whole host a whole entire host of diseases obesity is linked to. But why? Why are there so many people who are, are obese? I used to be obese, but we're not designed to be obese. And our genetics don't dictate our future. We have control over our genetics. So what is the real cause? What's the real cause of weight gain? If you go to social, if you go to social media, or if you go to most nutritionists and most dietitians, they're gonna tell you you're eating too many calories and you're not exercising enough. So they're gonna tell you to eat less calories and exercise more. This is terrible, ridiculous advice. This is not getting to the root cause. And if you look at the biggest loser TV show, if you look at those contestants, they did this and they got really cool transformations, right? And then what happened to all of them? They wrecked their metabolism and they gain all of the weight back, right? They gain all of the weight back. So we know that counting, counting calories is a failing formula, right? Cutting calories and exercising more to lose weight is gonna fail 99.9% .9 of the time. Now, it's gonna work at first, but once you get four, five, six months down the line, you're gonna gain all that weight back because you've wrecked your metabolism. The body is too smart, you can't trick your body. So if calories don't matter, what does matter, right? Hormones matter. Quality of calories matter. And you can't tell me all calories are the same because if I gave you 1,000 calories of brownies and I gave this other person 1,000 calories of a kale salad with uh, salmon and olive oil and I did that day in and day out, you're gonna gain weight, you're gonna have a whole bunch of uh, hormonal problems, this person is probably gonna lose weight and this person is gonna have healthier hormones. So it is not about calories. It is all about the hormonal response, the metabolic effect of those calories. But it's popular, it's very popular to say, because it does sound like it makes sense, right? It does sound logical to just cut your calories and exercise more and you have this energy balance hypothesis. Who is actually behind this energy balance hypothesis, right? Who started it? Coca-Cola did. Coca-Cola started it. And who contributes? to the education of nutritionists and dietitians, at least 40% of their funding comes from Coca-Cola and a whole bunch of these big food companies like General Mills and these breakfast food companies. Did you know that? So if you look at that, it's like mind blowing because they're teaching you one thing that's not working. We have this epidemic of people who are obese. We have this epidemic of cancer and diabetes. And did you know that 40% of all cancers are linked directly linked to obesity. Obesity is reversible. Obesity is preventable. So that means we have 40% control over that can over those cancers right then and there. Now, if cutting calories does not work, what does work, right? What does work? It, quality of calories, which brings me to my next point. When it, the real cause of weight gain is insulin. Insulin is the real cause of why people gain weight. I can make anybody fat. I'm a magician. All I have to do is give you insulin, boom, you're gonna gain weight, right? You give a diabetic type, a type two diabetic insulin, boom, they gain weight. You give anybody insulin and they're gonna gain weight. 
Therefore, insulin is one of the major causes of weight gain. And what spikes ins insulin the most? Eating frequently, that'll do it. So eating three meals a day and three snacks in between, eating every three hours, you'll, get, you'll gain weight that way, you'll spike insulin. Because remember, every time you eat, you spike insulin. Every time you spike insulin, you tell your body to store body fat. It's a storage hormone, a, a fat storage hormone. And it's a wonderful thing, it's a survival mechanism. The whole reason we exist today is because our ancestors were able to feast and store as much body fat as possible so they could go through periods of time when there was no food. You know, it wasn't like this. It wasn't like this where we have McDonald's, Whole Foods, Publix, all these supermarkets available to us 24 seven. So we have this, we're hardwired this way. It's a beautiful thing, but the problem is that we are going too frequently, we're eating too frequently. And when we're eating, we're eating a lot of carbohydrates. And carbohydrates, they spike insulin a lot. Processed foods, they spike insulin a lot. Sugar spikes insulin a lot. Now, what doesn't spike insulin as much as those? Fat, healthy fat, right? That's why I tell people all the time, at least 50 Five zero percent of your calories should come from healthy fats. What are healthy fats? Well, I wrote an entire list of it in my book, The Perfect Health Booklet, which is an Amazon bestseller. So you could read that chapter, chapter two, and get a list, but I'll give you some right now. Uh, avocados, olive oils, right? Wild caught fish, real pastured eggs, nuts and seeds, Coconut oil, butter, ghee, like these are the bulk of what your calories should come from. And there's a caveat, you know, these are saturated fats, these are healthy fats, so you do wanna have a lot of vegetables. You wanna have about seven to 10 cups of green leafy vegetables every day along with this, and plenty of fiber. You want your vegetables and your fiber to be the carrier for all these healthy fats. But here's the cool thing. Let's see, Melanie says, as a type two diabetic, I've been told to eat several times a day to regulate my blood sugar. Yeah, you see, so that's, that's tricky, right? Because your doctors are treating your blood sugar. They're not treating the root cause of diabetes type two. The root cause of diabetes type two is hyperinsulinemia, too much insulin for long periods of time. So instead of bringing your insulin down and, and helping your, uh, your pancreas and your liver, they're just treating your blood sugar, which is making the blood sugar look good, but it's not getting to the root cause, Melanie. So I would definitely, I'm not your doctor and I'm not a doctor, so this is not medical advice. But if I was in your position, what I would do is I would definitely study and practice intermittent fasting. I would study Dr. Jason Fung, he has a practice called Intensive Dietary Management and where he's put thousands of people, most of them type two diabetic, on a fasting protocol with healthy fats, like a ketogenic type of fasting protocol. And a lot of them have been able to um, reverse their diabetes, reverse their type two diabetes, and it can be done. And if I was working with you, I would help you do that. But I'm not your doctor and this is not medical advice. So yes, eating several times a day will regulate your blood sugar because right now you're a sugar burner. Most people, they're sugar burners. They need to eat because their blood sugar drops. They don't have that metabolic flexibility. So your goal would be, and everybody's goal would be to get that metabolic flexibility, which is to eat food and to have your insulin go up, blood sugar go up, have that insulin drive the blood sugar into your cells, have it go drop back down, and then shift into burning your body fat, right? That's a healthy person who has metabolic flexibility. The problem is that most people don't have that flexibility. They'll eat food, insulin will drive it into the cells, and then their blood sugar will just whoosh, drop straight down and they'll feel miserable, they have to eat something. And that's kind of where you're at, so there's some work to do with you. You know, there's some work to do with you, but I would say, before you start skipping snacks and skipping meals, to swap out a lot of your carbohydrates in your diet with healthy fats, to teach your body for two to three weeks, Teach your body to uh, learn what it feels like to keep your insulin low. And then once you do that, you can start maybe doing some intermittent fasting. And, and I would love to maybe work with you and teach you how to do that. But that's a great point that you bring up. And you would have to communicate with your doctors. And I want to warn you, doctors think fasting is 
A lot of doctors think fasting is stupid and nuts and doesn't work. Um, these doctors are not keeping up with the research. These doctors don't understand that fasting has been around since mankind for thousands of years. These doctors, they think that it's too good to be true, right? But it's not too good to be true. <laughs> it actually works. Look at Jason Fung's work. I personally do it. I have clients who, who do it. So um, we could hop, hop on a call, Melanie, and we could talk more about that. But yeah, weight gain is all about insulin, guys. It's all about insulin. So if you control your insulin, keep insulin low, you are going to lose weight. You're going to shred weight. And it's not about, first of all, it's not about losing weight to get healthy. It's about getting healthy to lose weight. Right? When you get healthy, when you achieve perfect health, a natural side effect is you drop your weight. A natural side effect is that you automatically get to your goal weight. So what we want to work on is your hormones. We want to work on your cell membranes. And if you want to get well, it starts in the cell. So insulin is the ultimate hater to fat, your fat burning hormones. When insulin is up, your fat burning hormones are down. When insulin is down, your fat burning hormones are up. So therefore, eating a lot of healthy fats keeps insulin low. Going periods of time doing intermittent fasting keep insulin low. So you're able to burn fat. And when you fast, your body pumps you full of energy. You don't go into what's called starvation mode. That is not true. It's actually the complete opposite of what happens. Yeah, Melanie, so um, if you go to speakwithben.com, you could go there right now and you could uh, look at my availability and reserve a session with me. And then I'll call you, we'll hop on the phone, uh, we'll do a free 15 minute consultation. So Melanie, go to uh, speakwithben.com and we could do that. So I just wanted to just share that with you guys. And if you live in Miami, you don't want to miss this event. It's taking place this Saturday, March 31st here at Live Free CrossFit, the, the CrossFit gym that I own. It's going to be a phenomenal event. It's free and you're going to learn so much about health. You're going to learn so much about your genetics, about diabetes, about cancer. If you don't live in Miami, I'm going to live stream a portion of it. So stay tuned it's between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. Eastern time in, uh, um, here in Miami, Florida. So thank you for watching. Uh, feel free to add as many people as you'd like to this group right here. I know that only a few of you are watching this live with me right now, but I'm gonna post this in the feed and we'll get about a, a few hundred views. So those of you who are watching this after the fact, um, invite people to this group. Let's, let's create a, a impact here with this community, right? And if you don't already um, join us for our Sunday um, book club meetings, definitely hop in with us. Every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern time, we go through a book. Uh, we go through a book each month, but each Sunday we go through different chapters of that book. So definitely tune in for that. And uh, thank you for watching. I really appreciate that, guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day.